This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show. Live from the Raw Radio X studios in downtown Detroit, this is the IT in the D show. program is intended for mature audiences. Excuse me, sir, is this the Delta House? Sure. Come on in. Where do you guys think you are? The Library of Congress? Detroit? Beyond the Sun? Any of those, right? So yeah, you have no. no boots? No. You have no gloves? No. You have no hat? No. You have no scarf? No. You have no scraper? No. How long have you lived in Michigan? All my life. <laughs> you, sir, are an idiot. I just, I can't say no, and I don't really want to, so I'm... Well, especially with the back doors open. We just lost our clean tag on iTunes. <laughs> Hell yeah. Networking Detroit, one beer at a time. How are we not strength. sponsored by PBR and Slim Jimmy? <laughs> I, uh, Damn it. <laughs> Take him to Detroit. No! Detroit! No! No, please! I that! No! I used to hang out at the Magumbo Bar. It was a rough place, the seediest dive on the wharf, populated with every reject and cutthroat from Bombay to Calcutta. It's worse than Detroit. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Then don't come! Shut up! Hell yeah! This is the ladies' man. How much scotch did you drink that night, by the way? A half a bottle. Okay, then shut the hell up. Is there such thing as a meat hangover? I love my Monday meat stick. Turn your microphone off. Just get out. Hell yeah. yeah You're in your underwear. I'm in my underwear. Hey, let's hang out. No, I'm sorry, honey. I have a headache. Spare me. <laughs> I may have to wipe the geek off. Hell yeah. Why would, like, Buick put their cars next to, like, the Bentleys? Like, why? That's not marketing. Um, the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> It's brilliant. You're so white right now. I, I'm the whitest guy in the room. Just explain it to me. <laughs> Shut up. Stop talking. Uh, I don't know who brought that bell in, but Bob's got a new toy. <laughs> You're not very informative, but why are you entertaining? Hell yeah. Yes, Captain so, Soundboard doesn't know how to run the soundboard. Captain. When are we going to talk about me? Jane, you ignorant slut. Woo! Are we at a break yet? No! So... What would you little maniacs like to do first? The question isn't what are we going to do. The question is what aren't we going to do. Ludicrous speed! Go! And welcome to another live edition of the IT and the D show presented to you by DetroitNet.org. Here live, but there isn't. I, I wish there were, but it, we can't. It'd just be bad radio. <laughs> yeah. So hit facebook.com slash it and the D. Um, check out the math note that's out there about the new math and all the fun stuff that's going on with kids. And apparently, people are just. We have for, we've had former teachers um, and all kinds of people chime in on it that are just losing their minds. Which when is does it become viral? Stupid Common Core. And, and when it's I don't know more than we usually get. Who knows? More than all the likes combined. That we more, more, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, more than the seventy five likes. So we get yeah, more than all, memes like all that. the crazy Turkish people. Um, I don't even get it. No, honestly, I looked at that math thing, and it was like the the math problem was thirty two minus twelve. As if you don't know, it's twenty, and they break it down into like four like sub segments of addition. It would, it would take the kid like you know four times as long to do the problem. What, at least, yeah. Because right. then, you know, then they have to think about each step. Because the way Dave explained it, it's like rounding, rounding up, point. rounding down, leveling. I'm like, what in the blue? It's like, why don't you just do subtra- subtraction yeah, and be done with it? Yeah, just learn subtraction. Right. How, about yeah. you, how about you just grab your calculator app from your iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> like everyone complaining that they See, they don't, you don't want that though because then you wind up in this so like years ago uh, device dependent yeah doing the whole Christmas shopping thing and we went to Bronner's right. and they lost they had a power outage and so they lost their cash registers and the poor little girl that was sitting there in front of me as I was could checking out yeah. could not do the math like she wrote all the numbers down on a piece of paper and she would go down and like you know try to do addition with it and she would like look up at me and be like she'd make it down the first row and be like four yeah, it's like, you know... No, yeah. seven. That's and an then, then when the, when the, the teacher next? asks a kid a question, no. the kid answers with the question, am I, yeah. am I right? No. So yeah. you're saying <laughs> is the point oh 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 one percent of the power goes out at Bronner's is when you need your addition. All right, makes sense. Right. 
I'll get on that. But okay, <laughs> but basic math skills are something you should have. Yeah, yeah no. I, and I, the whole point of the stupid meme is they're not teaching basic math math skills in school anymore. Like well, it, doing it should all not stupid. Uh, Equations, yeah, stuff. yeah, equations and triangles and all that kind of. And they're not teaching cursive, which I don't. You don't need cursive. I don't have uh, a problem with yeah, that. I'm to be honest yeah, with you, fine. did you ever write cursive lately? I look like a second grader. Exactly, it's, it's embarrassing. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, everything is just capital letter, print block. Exactly. Be done with it. Right. Um, but no. So I mean, it you shouldn't. It it should not come to the point where it it does all the time. Where if you go to uh, the drive through, um, or you walk up to a counter or anything, it, it just happened uh, last week when we uh, went out to uh, and. Ann Arbor, uh, doing the whole you know shifting gears thing and, and yakking with them. Stopped at McDonald's for a coffee and the bill comes out to like you know four oh eight and I hand her a five and, oh then, I go, and then I go oh eight I got eight and then she rings it up and I go oh wait I got eight cents and I give it to her and you would have sworn like I just pulled a gun on her with the look <laughs> on her face like she had no idea what to do at that point. I, and that's why they have I the auto nothing. change machines, right? You <laughs> you plug in what it is. Oh yeah, Speedway. It's yeah. Just, Exactly. Spits out, yeah, and then heaven forbid that piece of technology breaks because then they have no idea what the hell to do anymore. All they have to do is fill it up. It won't break. It, 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 no, it just yeah. No, when it, when it stops spitting out change for whatever reason, they have no idea how to run that system anymore. I think no, I think it is so the kids they they try to do this to screw up. So the parents don't do the kids' math homework. It's so they big teach them, So they teach them some some weird ass method, and then they bring the, the homework home, and they're like, "Dad, can you help with this?" And like, I don't know what the hell this crap is. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so then you know the kids done its homework, right? I think I think that's where it is. Well, and the problem is the kids not going to be able to do it either. Well, but I mean, that, yeah. and that was part of the conversation that was that was going on, you know, underneath the you know the little post that's out there. Right. Um, was people sitting there saying, "Okay, well, if my kid comes home with this." I I got nothing. Right. Like I'm going to teach them the right way to do it and then you and this was the challenge you know I always had in school where it was you know you well, you have to show your work. Why? If I know the answer and I exactly. get to the answer isn't that the end result right. that you're looking for? Right. It's not the whole to teach problem reasoning. solving. Don't they call it Chicago math? How the hell did that get named that? What, this uh, particular example yeah. or in general? Yeah, apparently the, people in Chicago are dumb. Oh. I, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they can't handle subtraction. Everything must be addition. I don't know. There was well, my my mother uh, the other day. My mother was over and she's reading like flashcards to my you know fourth grader. I didn't know seventy percent of the stuff she was asking. <laughs> and it's like it's like so. Uh, not only are you not smarter than a fifth grader. Oh no, I'm definitely not smarter than fourth. <laughs> no, but it was dumb stuff like who's the other president after Andrew Jackson that did this and that. And I'm like I don't know. You know. Well, that's all the the classic example of you know when are you ever going to apply this in real life type of instruction, right? Yeah. Well, but how many you know how many times have we, you know? And I did. I used to love that show. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? For no other reason than it shows you how much crap and nonsense gets crammed into your head that you never need to use again. Like right. I don't I don't need to know how many tablespoons are in a cup. Why? Because Google knows that there is not. And and you know what? And if Google's down, I don't need to know. There, there's not a situation. Nobody's going to hold a gun to my head and say how many tablespoons are in a cup. So this is why you always Go. joke like if you were dropped in the middle of the Amazon or shot, shot to a, uh, on a rocket to Mars, you'd be you'd dead. Like, oh, yeah, if I ever, yeah, if I ever slip through a hole in the time space continuum <laughs> and wind up like in you know thirteen twelve, I'm or or, may, or just maybe nineteen eighty, <laughs> right before well, the internet. Just so, make sure you give me an AR fifteen, I'll be fine. <laughs> right. No. So t- actually, talking about slipping back, you in wouldn't time, have any ammunition. No point taken. Right. So talking about slipping back in time, there was a, a, a really funny article on cracked and it actually wasn't even all that funny it was just a really good article about six things that they never talk about time travel and it ties oh, yeah, in that, yeah. and it ties into one of the stories that I shot you why guys why they earlier. send back 3,000 Terminators instead of one well no <laughs> so yeah, there's that story every that came, second of every minute of every day send back a Terminator like what the hell's a yeah, why exactly. just send one yeah they're, they're all just laying around just shoot them through and let them oh move. no he missed we uh, the movie, the, the movie oh no he's like a stormtrooper yeah exactly that <laughs> yeah. too and he's a stormtrooper and he's a stormtrooper <laughs> <Right>. yeah <laughs> Um, I can't see through those little isolates in the helmet. Right. <laughs> but so, you know, there was that town in Belgium where apparently, and this is just one of the weirdest stories I've read in a long time, a town in Belgium where they were excavating. Where they make the waffles? And they uncovered hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of casks 
of poop. I can't believe you brought this up. I saw the article. Like, no, it, we were talking about stormtroopers dissing us earlier. Yeah, Come I on. know. <laughs> yeah, 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 talking about poop. Uh, but no, so and one, but it, there's there's a tie in here. So they were, and how'd you like this job? The scientist that went in and analyzed the contents of the poop um, <laughs> to figure out how do you get that job? Yeah, exactly. How do you not get that job? That's what I want. They ate bread, <laughs> right? Like, no, so good, good thing we didn't step in it, <laughs> right? So they're analyzing all this stuff and like the whole it's all about okay so what sort of bacteria was in our stomach back Waffles. then versus <laughs> now Belgium. and it's <laughs> the moral of the story is uh, so that we are becoming weaker a as a, we're becoming weaker as a species because like there were a lot more thanks to the feces <laughs> right <laughs> no but that but that no proved out by the feces no so it's you know so there were are all you the, crying over there he kind of is <laughs> talk about poop I'm gonna laugh I can't help it. <laughs> so like we used to have as a we're at, like 10 minutes in this episode is already and we're already doing <laughs> Down the toilet. Um, but so it's we used to have a whole lot of more like bacteria resistance and immunity and all that kind of stuff back in the day that we don't have now. And that's one of the things where they were talking in that it's article. It's Purell. Purell ruined all of us. We don't have a natural exactly. ability. Just give to- me a bar of soap. <laughs> well, so didn't even have that. That was one right. of the things that was you know talking about the you know the six things they don't talk about in time travel. Where if you okay, where great. do they poop? Well, yeah, no, they, <laughs> apparently everywhere. Is, yeah, they, they just bury it under towns. Oh. Uh, but no. So if if you go back and t- you know if you if you you know okay time travels invented. You go back in time. Right. For the love of God, don't eat anything because your body does not have. Bring baby wipes. Yeah, the immunity. Well, don't drink water because you don't have the water for purification oh, systems. Be- that's why beer uh, saves oh, the world. Right. Yeah, yeah, you don't. That's have, exactly right. Yeah, mm-hmm. you don't have the food stand, the food pu- food purity standards that are out there now, um, and so your body is not prepared for it, and you will die. And, and that's just all there is to it. So yeah, Marty McFly, life's good. Go back to the Wild West. The part they didn't tell you is when he, you know, pulled an Oregon Trail and died dysentery. from dysentery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about dysentery way too much on this show. Twice. <laughs> but it wasn't that that dumb show that um, they tried to do the Jurassic Park thing on NBC. Oh right. And it yeah. had a great premise, but boy, did that show suck. It was terrible. So interestingly enough, uh, and this is one I didn't throw out, out to you guys because I didn't know if we would want to good since you brought it up. So there is a whole initiative right now in the scientific community and they're very very close to basically bringing back the woolly mammoth they have the dna they can make it happen they can basically do jurassic park why don't they just have an elephant have sex with a dog isn't that essentially what a woolly mammoth is wasn't that a a south park episode no that was an elephant and a pig um but no so man cow man bear cow cow, man bear pig um but so and that was part of the conversation they were having in there in that in that don't play god well and so okay this is a george carlin bit no it's god God gets high you know duck bill oh yeah yeah, no that was robin williams was that, is that what yeah. it was? Oh, take a beaver. It, yeah, take a beaver. Slap a duck like, bill on it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Darwin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but so, you know, okay, just because you can doesn't mean you should. What happens if you bring the woolly mammoth back? You know, you don't know what's in that DNA. You don't know what's in, you know, is it going to bring Where a new pathogen back? Uh, in an, in I don't an know. An island in the South Pacific? An island off Costa Rica. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like Godzilla. Exactly. They're gonna, no, they're going to put him in Antarctica, then he's going to eat all the penguins, then everybody's going to get pissed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do elephants eat penguins? I don't know what the hell they eat. But the point... No, I was ready to believe you there until you self <laughs> Right? Just... I don't know. Like, I mean, it, like... It, it, Just because you can doesn't right. mean you should. I mean, Jurassic Park as a concept... Just have them show the movie. The cool. Movie, you know. You know, it, yes, it would be awesome to see a T-Rex or anything like that. But I think, you know, it's one of those, you know, the dark side of technology. Uh, yeah, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Why, should, why don't they do that? Huge potential. Yeah, no natural predators for them. Life's good. If they got all this energy, time, and money to research stupid stuff like that, why don't they funnel all of that energy, time, and resources into curing cancer? I mean, seriously. Because the money's not in the cure for cancer. The money's in the treatment for cancer. That's George Carlin. Ah. (laughs) (laughs) Ding. Right, exactly. No, but, you know, the thing that, the one thing, I'm not, you know, I'm not an animal guy, dude, by any means. But when I see, like, there's pictures all over the, the internet, like, people like cutting rhinoceros horns and letting them just die yeah, off. Yeah, gutting that whales sucks. and stuff like that. Yeah. And like sharks, that whole shark fin soup thing, they're like right. killing off the entire shark population so they can eat their stupid soup. Well, what was that country in the... In, I'm not in, a big fan in of In the sharks, Far East so. where they, like, it yeah, was they, like they, an they, annual thing where they would go through and gut whales or gut dolphins just for the fun of it. Did you hear about that? It was on the internet, huh. I don't know, a couple weeks ago. 
that you know it was on the internet, so it must be true. Must right? be true, right? absolutely. But no, they had footage. Uh, it was like some bay in some far east country where all these dolphins would come ashore and people would just be standing there in the, in the low tide gutting them with knives Jeez. just Pe- for, the, for the fun doesn't of it doesn't PETA kill more dogs and cats than the humane society like I read that oh yeah that was one right. of the that's why I love you know Penn and Teller's bullshit but it's human but it's humane well no but so Penn and Teller's bullshit was outstanding like I, I if, what a great show I force everyone that says oh I love PETA to go watch that episode right just because yeah I mean they do like 98% of the animals that PETA takes in wind up being euthanized yeah yeah, just retarded and stupid. Yeah. No more animal talk. Right. Next. Moving so the on. one thing we haven't talked about yet is so our event is next Thursday night. Uh, we do have our big giant Magumbo St. Andrews Hall. Man, that's coming up fast. It really is. Very Hashtag 313. Woohoo. I didn't, I'll promise never to say that again. <laughs> if I could bottle the look that I'm sure is on my face right now. Yeah. yeah. La- Daggers, freaking laser beams Lasers. coming Lasers. <laughs> <laughs> so it is on March 13th, which is 313. Yep. Next, yep. Yeah, next Thursday night we'll be at St. Andrews Hall starting at 5 o'clock. Uh, it's going to be a good time. We anticipate at least 100 hiring managers. I would be floored if we didn't But not have that one many. stormtrooper. <laughs> Sucks to be them. Yep. Man, yeah, whatever. I say we They're just get lost. the plastic helmets and like the little kitty ones. Can we get a Lord Hel- uh, 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 Darth Dark helmet? Darth helmet. Dark- yeah, Darth <gasps> helmet. Spaceballs. Space. That's you know what? Screw the stormtroopers. I want space. I know someone that has We're a three D printer. We can make. We can make the heads. Make that happen. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Can we get a host to wear one of those? <laughs> what? You went over my helmet? <laughs> it's across her nose, not up it. Um. We so. We anticipate at least. I mean, so here's what's funny. Last, remember, uh, so we have like four sponsors, and the, the the reason why we did sponsors is so we could have free beer and free food. Right. Um. And then the people that show up actually think there's only like four booths, and they think this job fair sucks. Right. And, and they didn't then leave. Then they didn't. Well, they didn't read the FAQs, and that's right. one of the big things is or they didn't um, read anything that we post ever captain wordy here spent a lot of time and it's good information <laughs> um, <laughs> no but it's good information we need can um, we get him a cape <laughs> exactly captain. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> i'm captain chaos he's captain wordy right that's what i want to do too for halloween get an ambulance and do jj and captain chaos <laughs> oh, cannonball Run. i want to be the doctor <laughs> <laughs> Into serious matters. No, people actually get hired from these these things because we. I'm amazed that anybody <clears throat> listens to our show. Nobody does, and, no. and I'm amazed that anyone gets hired from our events because we're goofballs, and yet it still somehow. Works Good. I, I don't understand how Good. it works. You know? Good. No, because job fairs suck. They just had one in Detroit, and I didn't get any reports back. Did you guys hear what happened or anything? Was that the one anything. that was like in the street or something? It was. Yeah, the no, they had, like it was like Kobo. yeah they had like three hundred. Yeah, they had like three hundred fifty job openings. They had thirteen hundred people show up the first day. I heard um, Acro- across industries, or was yeah. it specific? No, no, it was no, like it was police, all... fire. Oh, yeah, that was yeah, one yeah, city jobs. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah city jobs. But yeah. What, but what it was it was like those, the classic like Daimler Chrysler sitting or back in the day sitting at a table going, "Here's a postcard on a URL to." Put right. a, fill out an app, and it's like I just sat forty five minutes, and you give me a GD, uh, you just give me a GD postcard with a URL, like kiss my bloody ass. Right. Um, if I'm going to a job fair, I want to speak with someone that's got their their hands their, their hands dirty. Hiring in this position. Yeah, exactly. I'm not here to get a card to go fill out my resume online. I'm not here to do any... Yeah, yeah just have a conversation with me. And that was the foundation what of event our smaller events. What event was that where the guy... Uh, my buddy Mike went to it. Uh, oh, God. It was at... I can, I can. It was like north I, of me. I can picture it. Yeah. It was at like a UAW hall yeah, or something like, like that. Bob, 45 minutes to sit in the line for Chrysler. And they handed me a postcard. To say was, go apply online. To go apply I on, do remember that. I, was, yep. I wanted to kill them. Um, so I think that's the main difference in ours is you're not going to you're not gonna be one of 80 talking to a recruiter. You're probably going to be like one of 8 to 10. But they're going to remember who the hell you are in the morning. Yeah, gonna, but at the end of the day, even if, the, even if they do wind up talking, like even if the recruiter winds up talking to... 150, 200, 300 people. Odds are good that that isn't the like those 300 don't match to the what they're actually looking for. So you'll probably be yes, one of the four or five that actually matches. And that's what we've heard all the time is that it brings that it compresses that time to hire down because it's not you know hey I post a job I get six thousand resumes I got to screen them I got to weed them I got to go through all that nonsense and that's why it takes six months to hire somebody. Whereas it's meet somebody at the event. 
you know, talk to, you know, 15, 20 people, find like four or five with a clue that actually fit, bring in two for an interview, hire one the next week. Yeah. But I mean, right. like, we and, did. And as a candidate, it's your, it's your chance to shine, to yep. have that, to have that conversation that's memorable. But it's with, not to, it's not to wear a suit. It's, we always say no, no, no 60 second elevator pitch. No. My name's Billy and I like to do Java.net development. And, no, it's not. You don't talk. <laughs> that, vo- that voice is actually getting better and better. It, it's, it's, um, he practices at home. Yeah, I know he does yeah, in the yeah. back. Of the mirror. Mirror. I talk yeah. to my kids like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, but it get, you know the, the the what I tell people is you get the sniper rifle out. We're not in buckshot mode. Right. You know you're not talking to someone that's hiring an admin. You're hiring. You're talking to someone that is hiring what you're doing. And if you're quality you know, positions, yeah, yeah. And I mean, you missed shifting gears last week, but we did the first uh, ten commandments of job search. Okay. And we said the first thing is. You know, your job right now is to find a job. Yep. Your second thing is, if you're sitting at home... Which made me laugh, because people's eyes kind of went, oh, yeah, really? Exactly. Yeah, don't have an objective on your resume. Really? No, the whole, if you don't have a job, your job is to find a job. And right. people were like, oh. Uh, so I really? shouldn't watch Judge Judy? <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> but the but the the, the honey boo boo marathon won't land me a killer. Yeah, yeah. You should, be on the, you should be on the phone eight hours a day. Not even the phone. You should you should mix it up. But what we said, if you're just hammering out emails, filling out job apps or recs, waste of time. You're doing it wrong because right. you're one of a two, a three, four thousand. That, that's the resume um, black hole. The whole uh, monster dot com yeah. resume black hole. So, All right, well, hey, let's dive back more into this uh, after the break. We already up wow. against one, and we did have Adam uh, that joined us in studio. Uh, he's going to be here talking about. He's the, like, huh? What? Who? What? 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 Uh, <laughs> talking about the Deluxe Expo that's coming up at the end of the month. And can't uh, wait. Hey, so that's this it. This is the IT in the D show. We'll be right back. IT in the D reads, meets, listen. One of the best companies to work for in Michigan for nine consecutive years. Three-time Best of the Best award winner. The fifth fastest growing staffing firm in the country. Sound like a place you'd like to work? Aero Strategies is hiring experienced recruiters. If your current employer is stopping you from maximizing your potential earnings and abilities, join Aero Strategies. Our unique performance-driven environment will position you to be the best. Grow your recruiting career. Call me at 248-502-2500 and ask for Kelly. 248 248- Five zero two twenty five hundred. This is a previously recorded episode of the IT and the D show. And we are back. Segment two, Woo-hoo. episode 32 of the IT and the D show, presented to you by DetroitNet.org, here live in the Robert Oak Studios in beautiful Midtown, Detroit, Michigan. For another week or so. This is... Uh, what? What? Sh- <laughs> this is... Uh, kiss us, duh, this is uh, Bob the Sales Guy here with Dave the Geek, Jeff the Voice of Reason. We've got a special guest in the, in the house. We've got Adam Lux here. You are running the uh, Deluxe Entertainment Expo. Yes, sir. How's it going? Good, good. How we do? Welcome. Thanks for making it out. And thanks for having me on, guys. You uh, drove here from Romeo, man. That is, like the, I think, the farthest... Uh, uh, wow. You drove farther than Mackie to get here. That's right. <laughs> That's stopping ground. That was so coming I, from Italy. I used to go to the crying schools on Joy Road, Evergreen, Michigan Avenue and stuff. So, because the, the, the African, like the Detroit schools are a lot more fun. They fight for real. <laughs> so, like, so, like, like, Two men enter, one man leave. No, no, no. Like, I was a kid. And I remember, like, like blood sport. Watch, right. We almost had Frank Dukes coming, but they changed the deal. But oh. long story. <laughs> um, so, like, I watched a white kid, and his mom's like, you don't have to because he got hit and started crying. Same thing happened in Detroit. This big, big, big mama looking lady. Why are you crying? I'll give you something to cry about. You go out there and fight. <laughs> so ever since then, I was hooked to Detroit schools. That's because you take my hands and put broken glass on it and it cut my soul. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I guess let's talk about the background here. So you run a karate dojo. Yep. We were voted best two years in a row by Channel 4, uh, 2010, 2011, best karate school in WDIV Detroit. Click on Detroit thing. Wow. Awesome. awesome. So, day, and if you notice his uh, Dave's hoodie, he's got the strike, first strike hard, no mercy uh, <laughs> yeah. hoodie on. Beers for the week, LaRusso. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we do not train to be merciful. That should be awesome. Oh, you Logan. No, you know, yeah. we do not train to be merciful. <laughs> yeah. Adam, you talk to be merciful. Adam, you're going to laugh. It's kind of like it goes into, it ties into that. I read the Top Guns, 
to segue. The Top Gun school, the actual real one, is that there's a five dollar fine if you quote the movie during the <laughs> Top Gun. School. Is there really? I find that to be oh the my one god, of the that's funniest. awesome. <laughs> so here we are, in like a karate dojo, we're like karate kid all day. Like, Shh, no, five dollar fine. Yeah, exactly. Quote. If you actually go to Miramar and you quote the movie, your How life. Dare is you, good. Call, yeah. you call me Larusa, man? It's twenty. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> find a dollar for every time someone lifts their leg up and goes oh, like no. this. Oh no! Or when I'm wearing a uniform, they're like, "You look like Ralph Macchio." I'm like, "Oh, oh no." no. Man, nice. Ray, Ray Romano, yeah. I get. I, I did this r- into my fist. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so karate dojo. So it, now, walk me through how that translates to the Deluxe Entertainment Expo because we've been watching it since you know, we've been talking for um, a month and a half, two months now. And so it started off where it was going to be you know the largest gathering of folks in Ninja Turtle costumes, but it's kind of blown out since then. I mean, you've got media celebrities you've got guests you've got wrestlers you've got mma guys you've got all kinds of you know so what how what is it <laughs> <laughs> what do you do <laughs> it, it, it's well why why am i paying my money for this ticket that's right. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome all right. <laughs> Well, it originally started, I brought Ernie Reyes Jr. into my karate school back in June, and we brought in about 200 people just to my karate school. So I started talking to Ernie, and I kind of looked up to his stuff, because, you know, I'm a big Ninja Turtles fan, I got a martial arts cousin Ninja Turtles, so I'm like, you know, what better way to have a world record, and kind of thank the creator. So, you know, Ernie called Kevin, kind of transpired, now we got Kevin coming, and then I kind of started in August. I got in a bad car accident, told my car, still got a big scar on my arm, broke this tooth. Yeah. Tore part of my ligaments in my knee, so I haven't been teaching karate for the last six months. I've been kind of working on this because I need to heal. You had time, yeah, right, yeah. Because I mean, we just started our seventh year being open. You know, in 2008, uh, everyone told me I was crazy. I hosted a karate tournament with no students, and everyone's like, "No one's going to show up." Well, we had 250 people show up and 500 spectators because for you know, wow. 10, 15 years, I went to everyone's tournament, supported everybody. Was first one there, last one to leave. So you, well, know, you don't hear much about karate these days because everybody's in MMA. Exactly. I mean, boxing's yeah. kind of dead, right? Um, pro wrestling. I don't want to say it as a bad name, but you know, people like turn you know turn their nose yeah, up a little bit. No, it's it's fixed. Well, right, right. But like you know, yeah, karate. I I don't hear anything about karate shows. You know, I didn't even know there were any. To be honest with you, yeah, yeah. Right, right. There's there's tournaments almost every weekend in Michigan. Really? But the problem is, you know, after I opened the tournament gates. It kind of, if Adam could do it, I can do it. But, you know, I was working as a security guard, and I, th- I quit my job in 2007. And I'm like, I'm going to focus six months strictly on my tournament. All right, you know, I'm just going to, dude, how old are you? Because you, you look like you're 19. I'm just going to be honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> Yeah. 28. Okay. Well, he said people, uh, you know, tell him he looks like Ralph Macchio. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, who's the, the eternal robot. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right. Retired right. right. at 22. Got it. We <laughs> almost had Ralph been. Macchio coming, but he wanted too much money. <laughs> what Surprise. Is, really? We were this close to getting him back. Come on, Ralph. Let's just say it was. It could have bought a car for when he wanted. Oh, come on, wow. Ralph. And he's a bit of a diva, what I heard from people that do events from him. Like, if his room's not the way he wants it, you will come out late and stuff like that. I'm nice. sorry, Ralph, Ralph Maggio has an extensive rider these days, he really. Like really? Beer money. That movie really? sucked. That's well, what he's doing. Dancing with the Stars brought him back to Revidence. Oh, he dear God. He did Dancing with the Stars? I didn't know that. Well, who was it? Uh, Robert, uh, uh, the... Uh, David Carradine? No, the, 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 the nerdy <laughs> nerd from Revenge of the Nerds. Robert Carradine. Robert yeah. Carradine. Yeah, so we were, you know, we did uh, Dick. Comic-Con last year. Booger, awesome. Yep, Curtis Armstrong. Strong is phenomenal. He's one of the coolest people I've ever met. Like Outstanding. Uh, Takashi, awesome. Yeah, he was the voice nice. of Leonardo. Yep, best yeah. guy ever. Um, Carradine, jackass. So was his brother, I heard, too. Really? My buddy tried to get an autograph. Like, he got an autograph. He goes, can you write Ali? He just gave it to him. He goes, come on, it's four letters. So he goes, you know what? Screw you. just left him there. Nice. I, I can't get why you would do a signing and then hate to be there. Yeah. Like, you had cop an attitude. Remember, the like, Dirk, day. Dirk Benedict, he got it. He would sit there and BS with people, and he had a good time, and he laughed. It makes the day go by faster. It, that, too. Well, right. it forever. well, it's like, how right. long How long did Mark Hamill, like, hold out where he wouldn't talk about Star Wars Decades. forever? And, right. Like, he, like, he finally just finally. did his first media appearance for Star Wars, and just finally. Yeah, I wonder why. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Else was the it? Joker yeah. money must be dry enough. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, no, no, Disney oh, they're too, making so new movies. Yeah, Star Wars 7 comes out. Exactly. What's his name? Carrie Elwes was a complete. Complete dick too, yeah. um, from uh, Princess Bride. Princess, Princess yeah. Bride, right? So that's like my my kid's favorite movie. So I, I happened to mention that to him, and he's like, "You look older than I do, and you have a child that likes my." You know, it's, it was kind of like reminding him how old he is. It's like, you know what? Just sign a stupid piece of paper. <laughs> Just get over it. Although, you know, a, a random like uh, like uh, click 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 thing. So Princess Bride, uh, never ending story. You know who is in like ridiculously hot these days? Still is the princess from. 
uh, the never-ending story. J- Jenny from Forrest Gump? Yeah, she like looks... No, 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 no. 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 Oh, never-ending story. I hated that movie. Yeah. What? Get out. I hated get, get that out. movie. Get out. Get out. <laughs> Talking about get Princess out. Bride, that stupid puppy flying thing. Falcor, I, get out! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give you Falco. That kid killed himself. He was uh, remember Sidekicks with Chuck Norris. Yeah, they will never release it because he committed suicide. They're never gonna release Sidekicks on DVD in America because he committed suicide because of it. Really? Wasn't yeah. that the kid from Ladybugs? Yeah. Wait, yeah. The, wait. The the kid from Never Ending Story killed himself? Yeah. Really? Yeah, he came out of the closet and then he killed himself. Wow. Because Roddy Dangerfield made him put a wig on and play in the girls' soccer team. I'd kill myself, too. Yeah, nice. Well, no respect, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, all right. So, like I said, so Deluxe that was Expo. A bad so, segue. Uh, well, yeah. So, it's. It it just seems like it's kind of taken on a life of its own. I mean, it and and we get that because basically every event we do takes on a life of its own. But so, what, like, what is the. Uh, the average, I mean, is it a comic fanboy that wants to come to this? Is it a wrestling fanboy that wants to come to this? Is it a movie fanboy that wants to come to this? Like, who? Hopefully everybody. <laughs> well, but uh, so why? I mean, it's, you know, I mean, that's our, like our our niche within a niche is the Det- Metro Detroit geek community. Hi. <laughs> well, that's the thing is, you know, there's, there's, there's already a few Comic Cons been established. I'm not trying to compete with them because, you know, they have their own thing. What we're doing differently is, first thing is, you know, the world record Ninja Turtles. You know, that's the first and foremost thing. I'm bringing every celebrity there because the first world record was in 2008 at Rutgers University. 786 people showed up. They ran out of shirts, so they could have had 1,000, they said. Mall of America, 2012, Nickelodeon opened a ride called Shell Shock. Right. Now, Nickelodeon's stupid because if they would have brought like uh, that girl Miranda Cosgrove or somebody, right. we would never be able to beat that record. World record for Smurf and the Turtles now eight hundred thirty six. World record for Smurfs, take a guess. World record for Smurfs, uh, I'm I'm at a, a thousand. That's that's close to Waldo's fifteen fifteen hundred. Waldo's, really? Jeez. How many do you think for Smurfs? I, I, Two thousand. I don't know. I have no idea. Five thousand. Five thousand Smurfs. Eleven thousand for Santa. So Claus. let's let me, let's take a step back. Are you defined as dressing up as a Ninja Turtle with a T-shirt on right now? This is or do you have to you have to wear the whole? So you have to have a bandana over the eyes. Have and the masks. I'm gonna get the mask made tonight. Uh, they're basically we're just gonna use ribbon, like a fabric kind of thing, cover your eyes. Right. That's what did the Mall of America. So you can use the Guinness rules is it has to be one of the four original colors. Okay. And then it's gotta be a shirt with the turtle logo on the front, and then a sh- can you throw me a shirt. It's gotta have a shell on the back. So that's the bare minimum now for Smurfs. They're painted in blue like crazy, like wearing the white hats and everything. But this, this shirt is the bare minimum. You know, we got the turtle okay. and the turtle front right there. Right. So with the mask on like that, you know, it's basically a thank you to Kevin Eastman because you know I, I grew up on the turtles and it's just you know I got so many kids joining my cry school because of turtles. You know, it's the thirty. My, my three year old son loves the turtles. It's hilarious. The Who's movie? the pizza sponsor? Do you think that's a huge opportunity? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would so, think. Right. You know, it's like pulling teeth. No kidding. So if I don't get a sponsor by the next two weeks, we're going to have a pizza taste test, and the winner will be the official voted best by the Turtle Challenge. There you go. So like, you know, Mama Pops, 10 Mama Pops, yeah. bring 20 pizzas each. It's not a bad idea. Because I'm trying to get Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut's sponsoring the new movie. They, the new movie in August, Right. they've got furniture made by Pizza Hut and everything crazy. Huh. And they don't want into this. It's you gotta get the right person to get hold of them, and it's just like hard as heck. I'm trying to get Domino's because they're Michigan-based. Hungry Howard's right. Michigan-based. Right, right. We're trying to get Pabst Blue Ribbon to sponsor this show. You think they'd call us back? No. <laughs> Isn't the brewery for sale? It is. Why don't we just buy it? One billion dollars. One billion dollars. <laughs> it will do a leveraged buyout. So it's a. So it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and it is the what twenty eighth, 29th, and thirtieth, if I recall correctly. Yep. From okay. So on Friday, what we're doing at. Um, one o'clock show opens. Now you know most comic cons. We're not like we're, trying, we're not trying to compete with them. We're trying to have an event that's similar but different. They have panels. Panels are great, but if you go to most comic cons, how many people are in a panel room? Some of them are packed. Yeah, it depends and on who's on the panel. Majority of them, how much are any people there? Uh, yeah, it's pretty skeletal. It's usually yeah. four people. Like I, I feel bad for sometimes you see like five people there. You know, yeah, like the hardcore nerds. Yeah, there's sometimes the audience. sometimes there's more people on the panel than there are in the audience. Yeah. yeah. So exactly. in your movie in 1986, I noticed there was a scene where a- you, episode yeah. 17 <laughs> of, of yeah right yeah <laughs> to deal with that the continuity error that I found <laughs> in the yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. yeah, you know. yeah. And so the thing is, but we're going to be doing workshops. So we're bringing in Jake Snake Roberts. He's teaching a wrestling workshop, you know, a week before he goes into the WF Hall of Fame. We've got Kung Lee, who's in the UFC. Um, we've got Frank Triggs. We're going to have Ken Anderson teach a wrestling workshop. Ernest Gatton Miller teach a wrestling workshop. We're having karate workshops, wrestling workshops. As a fight guy, that's a pretty stellar lineup you put together. I'm not going to lie. I'm a, I'm a pro wrestling nut. I'm an MMA. I don't want to say a novice. I'm a, I'm a 
decent MMA fan. I looked at the lineup. I'm just, are you kidding me? This is pretty damn stellar. I'm, you know, not to not to pat you on the back too hard, but. <laughs> You know, yeah. that's the thing is, I'm trying. Because the thing is, martial arts is dying. Like you said, you didn't know there's karate tournaments yeah. out there. Yeah. Well, the biggest reason why I started this is I've had, you know, I've had probably four of the biggest karate tournaments in the state of Michigan. The biggest I ever had was 500 competitors and 1,000 spectators back in Lutheran High North 2010. Um, that was when I used to have my first six tournaments were all charity. We give 25% to charity. I gave my first tournament half to make a wish. But um, every May, we lose half my school, every martial arts school does, to the enemy soccer, baseball. Right and summer, the, the enemy. <laughs> because they never come back. They're always, I'll be back, I'll be back, I'll be back. You get maybe one percent actually comes back because America, you know, like in Japan, ba- karate is part of the high school. Right. You know, America, we we sit, well, baseball. We everyone wants to get a scholarship. Football, scholarships. You know, how many people get a scholarship? Less than half a percentage. It's a proven fact that you spend more money trying to chase a scholarship than you could just pay for college. You know, everyone wants to. Interesting. Be pro. You know, it's it's true. Like I I think I did. You know, growing up, I did. Like one season, whatever you call it, of karate, and I grew up playing soccer. You're absolutely right. Yeah, and you know, I'm going on almost 20 years in the martial arts. You know, let's say 17. You know, but for the last say 13, six days, seven days a week. But it's the numbers are stri- dropping like crazy because you know, karate 20 years ago and soccer 20 years ago. 20 years ago was soccer big, nowhere near as it is now. Well, no, you had the European dad sitting on the sideline yelling, kick at the ball, and that was pretty much soccer back then. I mean, now they take everything a little bit more seriously. They take yeah. off the World Cup. Right. It's, it's the Karate Kid remake. I yeah. think I think Jaden Smith <laughs> killed the oh, Karate that, that movie. Oh, that movie is so bad. back, believe it or not. So let me ask, let me ask the million-dollar question, right? You got all this, you know, you got some pretty stellar talent coming, right? You got all these big names. How in the hell do you manage all those prima donnas? Um, is it just you? Yeah. It, um, well, I've got a few partners of mine, like, you know, my manager at my karate school, he's a big Comic Con guy, so you know, we kinda of, I kinda of approached him the idea to him and he's helped me out a little bit, but I'm pretty much went out of the way and contacted talent and stuff like that. Like anyone in the Turtles world, I've contacted him. I've been blocked on Facebook by so many celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> I even got Bob too. <laughs> I even got a thank I, I got a I got a thank you and good luck on your attempt from Peter Laird. I even invited him, but he doesn't come out to anything. Well so. Comic Con has volunteers, so you can basically be like the person's like you know, yeah, they've got like hundreds of volunteers. We're getting them working on right. So you sit next to them, and if they need their ass wiped, then the person's there for them. It's pretty much, you know, exactly <laughs> wipers. You know, um. Boy, wiper. <laughs> nice or back scratcher. No, but I couldn't. I couldn't scratcher? imagine. Like that's the thing. That's probably it's the last thing you want is uh, Mr. Nash requires a bottle of you know Voss. Like yeah. M- Mr. The Snake <laughs> needs. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Someone's got to walk Jake Snake. Yeah. Right. He's off. You know. Never mind. Yeah. So uh, again, like who? So I mean, it's it's three days, and and looking at the website, and it's uh, deluxeexpo.com? Yeah. No, it's spelled D L U X. Right. Not, it's not, a, yeah, D-E. not D E L U X E. Right. Yep. My name's Adam David Lux. So my whole life I've always been called Deluxe. So kind of just kind of went, went with it. My karate school it's called deluxekarate.com. Cheap plug, but. Uh, so, oh, yeah, we'll have, we'll have all the links and the recap and all that stuff tomorrow, absolutely. Awesome. But, yeah, it's just, you know, it's it's trying to be an expo that's made for the fans of these arts because, you know, you'll see, like, some events get a one or two wrestlers, but, you know, anybody can get a picture with them in front of the wall. Right. How can the average Joe actually go out there and train with them? You know, you might want to become a wrestler, but you don't want to sign up for wrestling school, or you might just always want to be a wrestler, and this guy's your favorite celebrity. That's so. a big thing right now, actually, getting the workshops with the, with the, the you know, we, we you know, we're, with the XICW guys, they'll, they'll bring in the big name. The big name at noon, what's he going to do, right? Besides sit in his hotel room or sit at the Pizza Hut, he's going to do a workshop, charge 25 bucks a head, and actually try to capitalize on the money. You know, So, I mean, yeah, that's a big thing right now is training with those guys. And that's the thing is Goldberg liked the idea so much. He's actually, Goldberg owns a Muay Thai gym in California. Really? And he's bringing his, one of his instructors out. Uh, he owns one of the gyms with part, his partner of him. He's teaching a workshop. So how often can you train with a guy who teaches Goldberg Muay Thai? You know, and it's just... I'm I don't trying. want to Muay Thai with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, don't, I don't want to Muay die. No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's the thing is, you know, I'm just trying to make the martial arts highlighted because, you know, you know, it, it, they've tried with the Turtles and stuff like that. Turtles is pretty much keeping martial arts relevant for the new kids, but there's just so much stuff out there nowadays, like, you know, parents, oh, if you don't want to, you don't have to. You know walking in the door, you're going to get hit. It's martial arts. It's like football. The first time you get tackled, you're going to quit? No. Right. Right. But we lose too many kids. They get punched in the face. You know, like... You know, you can hear this. That's my yeah. My note, everything pops and squeaks. But you know what? You know, I never heard one person say, hey, baseball saved my life, and those four guys jumped me. No, you don't hear that. Yeah, because you don't walk around carrying a bat 24-7. Or so, <laughs> well, and, and so, But one of the things I noticed is it's not just the events at the Expo. So, I mean, you've got 
an MMA event going on. Right. You've got uh, other stuff that's going on at night and that kind of stuff. So, I mean, what what else is out there, you know, that people can, you know, get admission to and can get into? You know, right. so, I mean, it's it's not just the, hey, I'm walking around to Comic Con, here's my 20 bucks, let me get your autograph. It's not, you know, hey, you know, it, it is the, you know, yeah, I can go hop in a ring with somebody and, and get a little training and that kind of stuff. But it's also a spectator event where you've got these martial arts in action going on. Right. Actually, uh, next commercial break, I'll run in my car get the poster. We got so awesome. much stuff. We got you guys are you guys are fan of Back to the Future, I take it, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So guess who's coming now? Um, Biff. Claudia Wells. She was the original Jennifer. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. She's coming out and then uh, we're working again in DeLorean. So that'd be fun. We got partners in crime singing Turtle Power there. We got the family. La- <laughs> Laughably, I might actually have a hook in for a DeLorean for you. We'll that'd be talk. awesome. <laughs> uh, we got we got we have, we have the turtle van coming. Okay. Uh, we've got Partners in Crime. Uh, we've also got the Fat Boys coming from the 80s. They're going to do a rap concert at the Turtle Co- World Record. Two-thirds of them. <laughs> yeah. We lost, <laughs> he lost a lot of weight. Prince Mark D's coming. Nice. So, But, yeah, we're having a cage fight Friday night as well. Uh, that's going to be from 8 to 11. And then on... Who? I am still retired. What are you doing? <laughs> Who? Yeah, the Fat Boys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, horrible segue. Yeah, right. was, <laughs> I should text him trying to see if he's Step away too. from the soundboard. <laughs> right, Step right. away. But, and then on Saturday, basically, I'm having like a big thank you dinner. Like, you're kind of like, you know, thank you to Kevin, thank you to Ernie. The other guys who kind of got me started to have this event and kind of, it just kind of exploded in the last six that's months. That's at the Imperial, isn't it? That's where we have our uh, wrestling events. Well, that's where the cage fights are going to be on Friday yeah. as well. So, you know. Are they taking care of you? What do you mean? Like, are they, are they doing okay by you? They give me a little bit of a break, but you know, it's just getting people. Yeah, we'll talk during the commercial break. Getting the people in the door. That's the hardest thing is because you know, if you're a Turtles fan, why not thank the guy who created them? You know, it was originally it was it was it was a joke he said it was just to make Peter laugh, right? And then it kind of explained, you know, boom, but boom. But if you're a fan of Ninja Turtles, you're a fan of wrestling, you're a fan of UFC. This is the event for you. You know, I remember well, I, was, got Rudy. I remember being 13 years old and like my neighbor was like. Got the f- number one comic book in Ninja Turtles. We're like, you're so stupid. That's so dumb. <laughs> and now I'm looking at it, going, God, I wish I had that book right now. You know? It's like I can't, I can't believe they're still around. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and you've got uh, Rudy uh, from Juggalos mm-hmm. Wrestling coming in. JCW. Yep, he contacted me. He's a big fan of all that stuff too. And that's the thing is, I'm hoping too with him. You know, the Juggalos and the Ninjas, they go side by side. So, you know, oh, of course, they're just, just clowns like, and ninjas. Why would you know? Of course. It's like ice cream and apple pie. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Well, that's the thing is I told them. We got, we got to check and make sure they're not bringing Fago in with them. Right. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, you know, the Turtles, it, it, the first two had no one from the Turtles. So I want to ensure we beat the world record just because I feel they deserve more than the Smurfs. Right. 5,000 Smurfs. Smurfs are stupid. Yeah. yeah. Smurf Never understood that. Stupid. And then, well, Smurfat was just a. Giant so wait, are you right, dressing yeah. up as Splinter then? Who's Splinter? You gotta have one Splinter. I'm sure splinter. somebody will. We're gonna have a few of the judges <laughs> guys be celebrity judge contests, like you know, costume judges and stuff like that. Gotcha. But you know, Kevin Nash was super sure. A lot of people don't know that. No, I knew that. Yeah. Yeah, so, I would not know that. Yeah, I didn't, yeah, so, I didn't lot, know yeah that. so a lot of turtle fans. Be, you knew you know, that because mm-hmm. I tried getting hold of the first shredder, blocked. Second shredder, blocked. <laughs> and then Kevin finally got back to me. So you know that was cool. But he was also the first person to be Goldberg. Oh, was I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Scott Hall came and tasered him. Oh, yes. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, I mean, so what it is. I mean, it's it's a whole series of events that entire weekend, not just... Because, I mean, that, that's the... And, uh, it's an ADD event. Well, I mean, because there's so much stuff on, going on. Here's oh the thing. God, cards yeah, on the table. Like, I went out to your ticket page. The three-ring circus. Yeah. Your ticket page might cause epileptic seizures. There, there's like 97 different ticket packages and things that people can get involved with and engage with and you know yeah I want this but not that I want column A not column B that kind of yeah, thing it's a bit confusing but it's my first year trying to make it work and that's right. the thing nope no, very cool. Well, I'll tell you what, we are uh, actually jumping up against a break, uh, so let's burn through this quick, and I, hopefully Time Act will come on that <laughs> We just want to stay shady. Yeah, contain yourself. We'll this is right. the IT and the D show. We'll be right back. IT and the D. Do you want me? Read, meet, listen. 